Hello guys, in this video I will answer a question by Harsh from my YouTube channel and will try to help him, so it will be mostly less about Eloquent, but this time I decided to do it a bit differently. For those of you who watch my other videos, I usually answer the questions with like 5 to 10 minute videos with just the answer explaining that. In this case, I decided to show you behind the scenes. So to answer this question, I have to create a Laravel project, Eloquent models, launch everything, test everything, and I want you to see the process. I even intentionally left in, didn't edit out any errors and mistakes I did in the video because you would understand the process of thinking, of debugging, and how much is involved behind the scenes. So let's analyze a short description from Harsh. The situation is a card delivery project and storing the fields for user product and attribute for the card item. And then a new table for toppings and the situation is to increase the quantity by one if it's the same product or add a new row to the card if it's a new product or new attributes. And first, a bit off topic, this description in three lines is really really hard to read. And it's a general comment from me to all of you who raise the questions on YouTube comment or Twitter or email. Please understand how much of the brain power I need to use to transform this in my head so I would understand what are the models, what are the relationships, and what are the actual problems that you're trying to solve. I don't know your project. So in my head, I need to transform this into visual representation like this. And then I need to understand what are you trying to do. So I need to come up with some kind of a method of a service like this. And I don't have a compiler in my head to transform all of that. So sometimes to answer any of your questions like this, I need to spend 30 minutes just to create a Laravel project, create that exact situation, and then understand the actual problems, and then I can help. And actually, it reminds me of descriptions from clients often, right? So clients often describe something in three lines of text in their own language, how they understand it, and they think that developers would figure out the rest or developers would understand everything under the hood. And usually it comes like three lines of code and then the question how much would it cost or how much would it take to build. And the irony that developers can provide those answers only when starting the build. So they need to recreate the project, the situation, try to play around with the model and then only understand the problem, understand what they're trying to build and then provide some kind of estimate. The actual solution will be at the end. But for now, let's do Laravel new project. Okay, so I have a project. Now database credentials. Okay, I have edited database credentials. And now let's construct the models and migrations. So what do we have if we return to the description? We have users that come from Laravel by default. We have products and attributes. Then toppings. And then cart with quantity. Right, so let's start with products. PHP, artisan, make model product minus m for migration. Then we generate the same four attributes. So model attribute, then toppings. So topping minus migration, and then cart. So cart. And now we have four models and also users, so five models, and let's construct the migrations. And if we open PHP Storm, by the way, it's Laravel 8, so models by default are in app models from Laravel 8. And let's open database migrations, products, let it be just string of name of the product, that's it. Then attributes, also table, string, name, toppings, also just a name. And card is much more interesting. So we need to have a foreign key to user. So table foreign ID user ID constraint. The syntax came from Laravel 7, by the way, for those of you who don't know. And then we duplicate those lines in PHP Storm with product ID and attribute ID. And there's also a quantity. So table integer quantity. Let's take a look at the description. So user product and attribute. And also we need a separate pivot table for cards and toppings. So we do artisan make migration, create card topping table. And inside of that migration, we don't need the IDs. We just need foreign IDs to card ID and topping ID.
both constraint. Okay, now let's run migration. PHP artisan, migrate, fresh, because I did have some data in the database, and we have that database now. Next is I will visually generate the schema so I would understand what are the relationships. For that, I would use MySQL Workbench, which has a feature called Database Reverse Engineer. And I just choose the database, and it all becomes a visual schema. And we have this. So some system tables which don't really interest us, but what we do need is this. So users, there is a card that belongs to user that has a product and has an attribute, right? And then there are also toppings with a pivot table like this. So now I visually understand what is what. Next, let's try to reproduce the actual method that Harsh needs. And it's basically adding a product to existing cart. And let's create a service for that, some separate class, which usually is called a service with one method. So we go app new folder services and let's create a cart service. So new PHP file cart service. And it will be class card service and one method public function add product. And what are the parameters? Product ID, user ID, attribute ID, let's close the sidebar and toppings. And then I like to use so-called comment-driven development. So I will implement that function, but not in PHP or Laravel, instead in English language. So get the product from users card with attributes and toppings. So with the same condition, we need to check if there is a product. If there is a product, we increase quantity. And actually quantity should be another parameter. Let's put it here. And see how much of thinking is happening in the middle of the process in progress of coding, not when looking at the initial description. So quantity is a parameter, else we create new product in cart. Final thing here, let's add a namespace. So namespace app services. So we have a service method add product with cart service, and we know what it should do. Now let's implement it in actual Laravel code. So first, get the cart product from user's cart. So cart equals cart, where, some conditions, and then first. And we will fill in that conditions. Then, if cart, then cart increment quantity. Actually, field quantity by quantity. This is an eloquent way of doing quantity equals quantity plus this number. And then else, we create a new cart record. So cart create, and then we'll list everything. So product ID equals product ID, user ID, attribute ID, and toppings. Toppings should be a separate pivot table, something like cart toppings, attach toppings and toppings should be an array of topping IDs. Now let's create eloquent relationship because I see toppings, it doesn't exist. So let's go to cart model and create public function toppings, return this belongs to many topping class. Okay, so we're creating eloquent relationships as we actually need them. So now we get to the main question in this video, how to build that where statement. So we need to look for identical products with identical attributes and toppings. Where user ID equals user ID, then where product ID equals product ID as a parameter, another where, where attribute ID is the same, And then we need to check the toppings, that they are exactly the same. And for example, toppings should be 
an array of, for example, one, two, three, something like that. So we need to check where has with relationship of toppings with callback function, query, query where toppings ID equals topping ID. And how do we get that one? And there's no method where has all or something like that. So we need to do a for each statement here and add as many where has statements as there are toppings. And for that, we would use query builder. So instead of doing that in one sentence, we will have this. So query equals cart where, it stops here, then cart will be query first, and this part will be a separate sentence. So first let's tidy up this, and then for each of toppings, as topping, we would have query, and then this part. So we're building query with more statements. This should be uncommented and this should be uncommented. Topping ID is this one. And that should be passed as use topping. And let's rename that query to Q, for example, so it wouldn't be the same variable. Remove that line and now we see our query. But that's not all. We need to add another condition. So we checked that all those toppings are present, but what if there's additional topping which isn't in the list here? So there is a card with four toppings and we're passing three and they are all present, but what about the fourth one? If there is any difference, then the card should be different. And there are multiple ways of doing that, but I guess the fastest one would be to count the amount of toppings in the card for that product and compare that with the size of that array. So we're doing with count, of toppings, then this becomes new line, and then we're doing where toppings count equals count of toppings, which is size in the array. And probably we should be fine. I will launch that now for the first time and we'll see if I didn't miss anything. How do we launch that code? We don't need any controller or route or anything, we just need artisan tinker. So php artisan tinker on that project, and then let's do service equals new app services card service like this and then try service was the method name add product to user id one actually product id one quantity one user id one attribute id one and toppings empty array first let's see if we don't have any syntax errors Oh, okay, of course, I used where statement before the get because toppings count, this thing with count, is a calculatable field, it's not in the database, so that where should be lower. That should be after get, and then we can do where, and then first. So that where condition is on the collections, not directly on the database SQL query. If we changed anything in the code, we need to restart artisan tinker, so restart new service again, and we launch that. Okay, there's exception of assignment, which means it's trying to create a card. And this is correct, the condition didn't return anything, so it's trying to create a card here. So now let's make all those fillable. So fillable array would be product ID, user ID, attribute ID, and quantity. That's it, relaunch Tinker again, Oh, now we forgot the quantity, okay. Quantity, quantity. One more time. And of course we cannot add that because there's no user, there's no attribute, there's no product. So let me add that directly in the database quickly. Let's add a user. It will be incorrect from Laravel, but it will still work. So topping, some kind of topping some kind of product, and some kind of attribute. Now let's try again. And no error now, the result is null, and now let's see the cards table. Ta-da, we have that. Now let's try to add that with a topping. So same, but with topping ID 1. And it should create another record in the card. Let's see. Yep, it returned another record. And let's see the pivot table. Card topping is also filled in. 
Now let's repeat absolutely the same and this time it should increase the quantity instead of creating a new card record. Launch that, no errors and let's see the card. As you can see the quantity is 2, so it was correct. Finally let's try to add a product without toppings again and let's see if that was increased correctly. Okay, no. Refresh and we see quantity 2. So it works with toppings or without toppings. So this is the final solution. Again, let's get back to the code. We're getting the card, checking the attributes, checking the toppings, checking the amount of toppings that it is identical, and then increase quantity or create a new card record. So I hope with that I answered the question by Harsh. Let's get back to YouTube. So this was the original question. And see how much time it takes for me to answer the question and then shoot the video. So in total it's around 45 minutes of coding and shooting and then another hour will be about editing and publishing and all of that. And if you appreciate my work please subscribe to the channel and tell your friends to subscribe because I'm shooting those videos almost daily now. And also you can check out my courses at laravelldaily.teachable.com to support me and this channel as well. See you guys in other videos.